This is going to be a video on how to fix a broken U UFL connector for a flight controller. After I fix the UFL, I'll be fixing some other issues. If you want to stick around for that, feel free. I'm going to start by cleaning out the old solder pads. It's always best to try to retin these pads. It'll make it easier for you to solder too. You want to get yourself some leaded solder and then retin these pads. Don't put too much, otherwise the when you try to put the new UFLs on, it's going to be lopsided. Next, we're going to prep the UFL connector. If you flip the connector over, you can see that is the main point right there. You want that to be connected to this. Make sure you don't put it on backwards. All right, so I'm going to start by tinning all three sides of the UFL connector. You can put a little bit of flux on it to help, to help the solder flow better. Do not overheat this connector. It will melt very, very fast. One side is actually slightly longer than the other, and the longer side is what's, fa it's what's facing here. The pads are tinned. I don't know if you could tell, but they did melt a little bit. So if they melted, then you could fix that with an X-Acto or just some pointy tweezers and just scrape away the melted parts of it. The reason why this is necessary is because if these are melted on top of the connector, then you can't make good contact with that with a soldering iron. So if you scrape away the melted portions, then you could directly contact to it. I also don't advise using a conical tip for this. This is what I like to use. It gives me the best uh, thermal conductivity. Make sure the center pin is right next to that capacitor. That way you can just easily solder it over. Pull the soldering iron at an angle and touch the contact pad on the board and the pad on the pin, on the UFL connector. And now for the sensor. Before you plug down a new connector, you want to at least make sure that nothing wiggles or moves. And now you can plug the connector down. Time to test for video. Attach the camera. And it has video. Getting video does not mean that it's fixed. Even with the antenna broken off, you can still get a video. It'll just be a horrible signal. So what I like to do is I will put the drone 50 feet from me, set the video power to 25 milliwatts, and I'll see what the breakup looks like. If the breakup looks acceptable, then I'll consider it fixed. If not, then try again. Once the UFO breaks off, sometimes the VTX signal never fully recovers to what it once was. Sometimes you just damage the VTX. The repair is done. Now it's time to continue building this drone. Negative is always much more difficult to do than positive. So just be patient, add some solder, and let it slowly melt. I'm gonna clean up these old solder pads before I connect new motors to them. I'm also gonna be direct soldering the camera connector. So I will tin those pads, not install the motors. It doesn't really matter what direction you install them in, because you can configure that later in bed flight. You should also tin uh, each motor lead. I've already done that. Alright, that's done. Now just to connect the camera. I'm going to be installing this on a 3D printed frame that I designed.
someday I'll go more into depth about what it is that I'm doing. This is unnecessary. Just adds extra weight. Now to tighten the screws down all the way. There is no excuse for routing cables incorrectly on a drone that I designed. Even though it is two o'clock at night and I am working with insomnia, there is no excuse. Where I screwed up is I need to route this through here. That way it doesn't get caught on the props. I don't want this new power connector to get shredded like the old one did. Build is finally done. 26.42 grams. This will be joining my fleet of 3D printed drones. Eventually I'll make a proper video explaining how I made these. I can figure the drone off camera. Someday I'll do a proper uh, explanation on how to do that. Perhaps I'll get too ambitious.